Almost every week while tutoring, I see my students fall for one of these three tricks. So I thought I'd do a video where I just cover the trick questions that are most likely to come up in the GRE. Of course, there are many other types of trick questions, and these particular tricks might also be tested in the GMAT, but I just wanted to cover these three ones quite quickly in this video. An obvious recommendation for this video would be for you to pause the video and give your honest answer. I know obviously you're expecting a trick question, but I might have tricked you and there might not be a trick. So either way, try yourself and see what you would have honestly picked before I tell you what's what. And if you can see through these three trick question types and get them right, you're a big step towards a good score. Okay, let's do this one. X and Y are integers between zero and five. What's bigger, quantity A, X minus Y in absolute values, or quantity B, 0 0.99? And this is a quantity comparison question, which is in the GRE, where you need to say which one's bigger, A or B, or they're the same, or D, you don't know. Now, obviously, if this came up in the GMAT or a different exam, it wouldn't be phrased as a quantity comparison, but the same core concept would be tested. So what's your answer? What a lot of people would do is try out numbers and they would try out five and zero and they'd notice that five minus zero is five and the absolute value of five is just five. So quantity A is bigger. By the way, the absolute values, which I've covered in a different video, just turn what's inside into a positive if it wasn't before. So to do another example, if x was 3 and y was 5, 3 minus 5 is minus 2, but the absolute values turn the minus 2 into a 2. So again, quantity a is bigger. And after a while, people would see that the numbers they're picking always give quantity a as being bigger, and they'd pick quantity a. The mistake, of course, is that the question never used the word distinct, and that's an important word that they missed out. They didn't say x and y are distinct integers. And the word distinct means different, that they're different integers. Because they didn't use that word distinct, we don't know if x and y aren't just the same number. It could be that x is 3 and y is 3, in which case 3 minus 3 is 0, and the absolute value of 0 is 0, making quantity b bigger. So the answer would be d, because they didn't use that word distinct, we don't know if they're not just the same number twice. So watch out for the word distinct. They sometimes might use the word different, which is a simpler word. But either way, those words are needed for us to know that they're different integers, not just the same integer twice. Right, that's the first trick. Feel free to pat yourself on the back if you got that right. If not, brilliant, because you just learned something from this video. So let's move on to the next trick question. Nicole will choose three distinct numbers between one and five, inclusive. Quantity A is the product of the three greatest numbers she can choose, and quantity B is 64. So here, in this question, we can see that they have used the word distinct, which means that the numbers she's going to pick can't all be the same. Quantity A is the three greatest numbers she can choose. So that would be 3, 4, and 5. Inclusive means including 1 and 5, including the bottom end of the range and the top end of the range. So most students would go 3 times 4 times 5 is 60, and that's smaller than quantity B, which is 64. So quantity B is the bigger one. The trick here, very common trick, by the way, in the GRE and the GMAT, is they use the word numbers, not the word integers. That's a big red flag. The question said that Nicole will choose three distinct numbers, not three distinct integers. So don't be fooled by the whole, it has to be between one and five. That doesn't mean the numbers in that range are all gonna be integers. So what are the three greatest numbers that she can choose? Well, five, 4.999 recurring, and 4.998, for example. They can be decimals because the question didn't say integers, it said numbers. So the three greatest numbers she can choose are all essentially five. Now I know it says distinct, but you could call one of them five, one of them 4.9 recurring, one of them 4.999998. So essentially in terms of the mathematics, 
they're almost all five, just under five times five times five, which would be 125. That's five times five times five, five cubed. So given that they have to be distinct, they can't all quite be five, then it's gonna be a shade under 125, but either way, that's much bigger than quantity B, which is 64. So quantity A would be bigger. Again, the trick here that many people miss is when the GRE uses the word numbers instead of using the word integers. Or if they don't use any word at all, just be aware that decimals are a possibility. By the way, if you're enjoying these tricks or you've learned something so far, please do leave a like and a comment. It really does help the channel out. And if I get enough feedback from this video, I'll do future videos on other common tricks that they can ask you in the wording of questions. Here is the final question, the final trick question. XY equals 23 and YZ equals 19. X, Y and Z are integers. Quantity A, X plus Y plus Z, the sum, quantity B, 42. Now, even though they didn't use the word distinct, we can know a few things here, right? 23 and 19 are primes. That's always good to spot. Now, because 23 and 19 are primes, there's only one way to get to them. It can't be five times six or anything like that to get to 23. It would only be one and 23. Now, we wouldn't know necessarily which way around it was, one and 23 or 23 and one, but we would know it's that combination. Same thing for y times z, one and 19 gets us 19 or 19 and one, but we wouldn't know which way around. But then the more observant students would say to themselves, ah, it must be y that's one, because y appears in both products. So it must be that x is 23 and y is one, and again, y is one and z is 19. Otherwise, if y was 23, for example, in the first equation, then that wouldn't make sense for the second equation. So there we have it, there we have the three numbers. And with those three numbers, we can add them up. 23 plus one plus 19 is 43, I believe, making quantity A bigger. The trick, and I know some of you are now screaming at the video, telling me what the trick is, is that it never said that X, Y, and Z are positive. A very classic mistake. I remember in my final practice test before the real thing, I got one of the questions wrong based on forgetting that they could all be negative. So I don't want you to make that same mistake. It could be, I was kind of tricking you in the way I was saying it, but it could be that X is negative 23 and Y is negative one. Negative 23 times negative one does get you positive 23. Likewise, Y would be negative one and Z would be negative 19 and they multiply to get positive 19. Notice the question never said that they're positive integers. They just said integers. And so if all of them are negative, X plus Y plus Z is way lower than, it's like negative 43, which is a lot smaller than positive 42, making the answer D. Now, finally, to those people who got all of them right, congratulations, but I would say, can you get them right in the exam under that pressure? And that's why this kind of practice is essential. Even if you spotted these tricks and the trick questions, it's still important to practice and be almost paranoid about the kind of tricks that the GRE, GMAT and other tests can throw at you. Don't be like me, getting questions wrong even though you know the topic. And for those of you who learned something, I'm really glad you watched the video. Either way, to all of you, see you in the next video.